times. I remember <clears throat> as a student, uh, there were, well, we knew all the faculty. That's what I liked about it. Everybody knew everyone, and everyone could talk to one another, and you you had a sense of congeniality regardless of whether you were a student or whether you were a faculty member. But I liked it so much more because we would get together more frequently. We would see faculty at, at different activities. Uh, they, would, they would be doing things uh, together. We'd go to the auditorium, and we'd, they'd be there. At, uh, everyone was participating, and it was, you know, we weren't isolated. We were all together. Okay, I remember one interest on campus that was really uh, helpful as a teacher, and that is when you observed other teachers teaching, you got a sense of uh, how they manage the class. And one of the things we did was to visit the demonstration school as, a, as teachers preparing to teach. And uh, when we came in, we would sit down quietly in the back of the room, and uh, we would watch the teacher teach a specific area that she was dealing with. And uh, what I liked about it was the, the informality. Uh, she didn't even, she didn't let on that we were even in the room. So uh, it made a big difference. And, and you get a sense of classroom management when you observe other teachers. Now, sometimes you can find out that there are some things that don't always work in the classroom. I mean, you the reason students behave the way they do is there's got to be a reason. But once I came on campus as a student, I got to know Carl Lung. He was a jack of all trades in the uh, physical sciences, and he worked on problems with physics, chemistry, biology, and really wasn't hired to do that, but when somebody wanted something done, they asked Carl, and he would do it. But anyway, the reason I'm bringing his name into it, we would have breakfast at Angelo's every morning. We would meet, and we would talk about the preceding day and what was coming up during the day. And Angelo's uh, was op is open very early. They're open around 5 in the morning, and uh, we would have breakfast around <clears throat> 6.30, and uh, we would come back to campus and... and proceed with the day. But he was a, a really a, a unbelievable type of person, and, and because uh, of our relationship, we, we always were able to uh, get along well, and uh, Angelo's is like one of these things that, that everybody knows about. <laughs> I have some friends in vinyl that come to, up to Glassboro regularly all, each week, and they have breakfast or lunch at Angelo's. So Angelo's is a mainstay. There aren't too many diners around like that. Uh, and as a, as a student, uh, we would go in there and have lunch. And, and one of the things about Angelo is, is that you would get a different soup, homemade soup each day. And I mean, it was not just a cup, a nice bowl of soup. And that's what usually we would have. we go in there for lunch. And it wasn't expensive. Now, when I first came here, uh, I was teaching principles of earth science, meteorology, and astronomy. Now, they did not have a meteorology course, so I wrote the, the uh, outline for the course, and they adopted it. And they were all designed so that the students could be part and parcel of the program, so they knew what, what, what would they do if they wanted to teach students something about meteorology. So we provided them with every opportunity possible to to know what meteorology was about. We used to take the classes to uh, Millville Airport. They had a very nice meteorological center there, and the gentleman that ran the program uh, invited us back. I, I must have taken students there for five or six years. At the same time, <clears throat> because we were at a good point in New Jersey, there was already on campus a, a, an observational center put there by the state, and the pr purpose of it was to measure every morning at 8 o'clock the maximum minimum temperature for the previous 24 hours, the amount of precipitation, and any other interesting things that meteorologically took place. And that information was forwarded by phone to 
Rutgers campus where they had a center there to receive data. Now this material was basically for climatology purposes, for climatological information. You need 30 years of data like that before you can say anything about what the climate is like about any given place. One of the things that happened after retirement, we did get together what we call an Omega Group, and that consisted of, of uh, Mr. Wacker, whose his name is on the, the uh, football field in his honor, and uh, Clancy Miller, who was one of the greatest guys in music and choral work that I have ever met, Dick Gombacher, who was an interesting guy in his own right, uh, Dick Moore, who was a human physiologist, uh, and we met regularly at the PMB diner once a week. And he was, uh, each one of us had a different experience and we, we had a lot of good, good times talking about how we were doing, what we were doing and what was going on in our lives. One of the great faculty members on campus was, a, was Dick Wacker, uh, who was a football coach and he originally was a golf co coach, too, and they took away golf, but uh, he was the kind of guy that uh, was very, he had very strict values when it came to how he would deal with others and how you would deal with others. And he would not tolerate any uh, bad language from students or his team members. And uh, he, he was... He really understood what he was doing. You know, is he had a masterful uh, understanding of, of coaching and of what, what had to be done and how it should be done. And he uh, instilled that in his, his uh, teams. I remember he, uh, he told me one day that somebody said something that he shouldn't. He said, and I bent him over and gave him a shot with my foot in the pants in the behind. He said uh, he didn't like that very much, but he said he never said that word again. You don't have to put that in the picture, but anyway, that was one of the things that uh, he was. He was gentle giant, is what he was. That's what I think of him as a gentle giant. He he was a very disciplined person himself, but a very general or a very generous person too. Uh, we used to have occasions where we would go places and do things. He 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 was great for getting faculty together once a month at uh, for dinner. And he would always uh, have some interesting story to tell everybody. And then he would also welcome people who uh, hadn't been there before. So once in a while, we pick up some new retirees. We, we all look forward to seeing one another. So we did that for quite a while. Well, once he passed away, that was the end of it. And I, I really... Miss that because we used to, you know, we'd see members of the faculty, 22 that you all knew. Now, some of them, you know, were in different areas, but, you know, they were good friends, and you just like any other friend that you have. So that was one of the highlights of uh, Dick Wacker's uh, generosity. When Bossart Hall was finally torn down, I remember <laughs> it's hard to believe today when you come into the campus and into the science area that there was ever a building there called Bossart Hall. But anyway, one of the great things that did happen uh, in Bossart was that we had a very nice uh, donation from an alumnus uh, for the building of, uh, of a new planetarium. G uh, Mr. Edelman, who gave the money for that program, and uh, when anything happened, he made sure that we had the top drawer material. We had a new computer, we had a new projector, and the program just progressed. And now the new planetarium director, she is fabulous. She runs programs two or three every Sunday and uh, during the week. And uh, she is she's outstanding. We were very fortunate to have her. It was a blessing to all of us because we knew not only where we were going to get the planetarium, but we also knew there were funds available for a telescope and a telescope dome, so we had got both in that building. So that building is very complete now for astronomy, and it's expanding, too. The, the program itself is 
is growing. So we're very pleased and happy with that. And I'm proud of, of, of how well Rowan has done and uh, from its very beginnings. A lot of people's lives have changed because of, of, of faculty who have been considerate and understanding. And those are things that don't, you don't forget. Those are the things that make your teaching experience worthwhile and memories with it.